fucked up so much. Oh. Sorry, so much. Go again. Um, are we? Are we? We are no now. Muted? We are no longer muted. I messed up. You, you can go. Uh, thank you, Throck, for letting me know. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Lucian Khan. I uh, this game, Dead Friend, a game of necromancy. Um, this is a spooky tale of two friends, one of whom is alive, one of whom is dead, um, and. Uh, being the dead friend, I am going to be the course of a ritual slash game where we will be using for randomization of story prompts. Um, and eventually the two of us will come head to head in over the ultimate outcome of this nefarious conjuration. All right, um, why don't we pull up the rules? Uh, I will pull them up over here, and why don't you, why don't you tell me what uh, we're doing first? Great, and also um, for everybody who is on the um, uh, online and watching us and listening to us, you can't this game um, as pay what you want. Um, on drive through RPG. So if you go to um, drive through RPG.com and look for Dead Friend, a game of necromancy, um, you can go ahead and download it and play it on your own and evoke your own ghosts. Um, so that's there for you as well. Um, and without further ado, the rules here I have in my apartment this printout grimoire um, with spooky fonts. Um, and we decided um, that we're going to play in a sort of uh, steampunk London town setting of some sort. But yep. that's all we know about the setting. We'll figure um, that la out later. Exactly. Um, and the next thing we have to do is each choose a name for our character. Um, and we'll be writing these names Graham, um, so that we can perform this conjuration. I think I'd like to be named Sterling. So I'm going to go ahead and... And you can choose a name for yourself. Okay, I will be... Um... Uh, let's see if I can spell this right, but I would like to be... Is that a double L for Milo? I think Milo is one L. One L. Okay, then then I got it. All right, cool. We've got Milo and Sterling. Milo is alive. Sterling is dead. We're not sure exactly. Yeah, we'll figure out how this death out. occurred later. This death occurred. We will be flashing back and finding out uh, exactly how that happened. Uh, the next thing is um, there are several potential conflicts um, that can happen between the two characters in Dead Friend chosen a conflict known as the devil which in my opinion um, looks like the best one yeah so in <laughs> the devil um, the living so Milo um, wants to gain otherworldly power from me by conjuring me from the dead I wish to possess and own his soul. Um, so this conflict will come up game as the conjuration uh, comes to an apex. Um, so without further ado, um, we can go ahead um, to something called uh, the Ritual of Earth. Okay. Well, we're, we're almost at the Ritual of Earth. We're, we're starting at part one. Okay. Uh, the grimoire we have. Part one, Earth and Water. So is that the setting and, the scene part? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So um, let's look at setting the scene. We've already um, 
set our magic circle on the table. It is on our virtual table. Um, if we were in person, we might sprinkle a circle of salt around this. Um, so you can all, um, listening at home, imagine that a circle of salt right there is done. Being, <laughs> is being thrown around this circle. Um, and we have two coins that will be used throughout this ritual. We have something called the circle coin, which is the large coin that you see um, over near the east. And we have the star coin, which is the small coin, which is sitting on the altar. Um, so that is how we are starting. And now, the living, you are preparing to perform a dangerous ritual of necromancy. Describe the scene of your preparations. Is it day or night? Are you outside or inside? What can you see, hear, or smell? I would say that it is, it's night, but not for too much longer. We're, we're approaching the day within a few hours. Um, it is definitely inside, small, like, attic space with a small window. Um, smell is primarily like mildew and mold. Um, it's a cold, would be really cold, um, but you can hear the early preparations of the day happening outside the cobblestone um, of people walking on it, horses starting to move across it. Um, and I would see, I guess, my, my, my magic circle prepped probably with a couple candles and uh, yeah, and salt sprinkled around. Great. I have died recently. I am new to the realm. I'm going to describe that realm. Um, I am in a vast cavern of bronze gears that are um, creaking and lunging forward in an elaborate matrix of gear movements, some of which are um, causing cavern to um, to move and convey along. For example, um, if I look above me very far, I can see some of the bronze gears have um, uh, activated a pulley on um, something that that shoots forth a waterfall of um, what looks to be magma um, that's flowing down over the ridges and some of the other gears. It is um, that combination of um, copper and bronze and, and blood. It's a bitter uh, metallic smell. Um, and the entire um, realm is suffused with a kind of white mist um, that makes it hard to see where the top of the cavern is or the bottom. Um, it just sort of looks like it's expanding out in all directions. So this is just going to so be us what... constantly trying to out-describe each other. <laughs> it might be. We'll see. This is, this is going to be awesome. Okay, uh, the living, uh, place your right index finger oh. on the star coin, which is the mm -hmm. little so, one, right? So we're all, you're touching that, that coin, um, on the altar, yes. Okay, uh, my friend gave me an important object, uh, represented by this coin. Describe the object. I will say it is a coin, uh, but it's like, it's a, it's a foreign coin. Uh, it's an mm -hmm. old foreign coin um, right. that he brought from far away. And what's it made of? Uh, it is made of cold, very cold, hard iron. Great. Um, so um, just so we all know, these coins are ritual objects. Over the course of the ritual, the circle coin travels around the circle, visiting each of the four cardinal directions. At the same time, the star coin travels to each of the five points of the pentagram. 
Together, the two coins mark both the passage of time and our journey through the elements. Okay. <laughs> Whenever the circle coin moves around the circle, we will both hum softly. And for the rest of the game, whenever the star coin moves to a different location, I, the dead, will say a word from beyond, followed by a single word. So we will see these rituals develop as we move to the ritual of Earth. The ritual of Earth, okay. Uh... The turn Earth. Okay. And yep. What is going to happen now is an invocation of Earth through three motions. First, um, we will uh, let's trace this pentagram. Maybe you can see it moving. Um, I don't think we can actually trace the pentagram with our finger. I. But can imagine. Do something. Do something. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Great. Cool. There we go. <laughs> Beautiful. And we're going to move the star coin to the earth point of the pentagram. So moving this to the earth point of the pentagram. Oops. Be over to there. Um, and that has moved, so I will say, a word from beyond, smoke. Okay. And we will move the circle coin to the north. So we will hum eerily. That's all I got. There it goes. <laughs> all right. So now I'm going to shuffle um, the pentacles suit of cards so we can randomize our story prompts. Okay. Uh, once I'm shuffling the pentacles. Okay. Shuffling those pentacles. And. We're each drawing two cards. So I'm gonna give you your two cards. Your two cards are the five of pentacles. You have okay. the five of pentacles and you have, where are the, nine of pentacles. Ace of Pentacles. So we're going to take turns here, um, and we're going to describe some people in our shared community from before I died. Okay, real quick, let's go back. So I have the Five of Tentacles and the what? Five. So um, you are going to be describing two people. You're going to be describing someone powerful and greedy for the four, Okay. And ignored for the five. Whereas Any... I will be a lord. Yeah. Somebody's uh, no. Somebody. Uh, if you look at ritual of Earth, Earth legend. Oh, oh, oh I see, I see. Powerful and greedy, yeah. so and you... someone suffering and ignored. Okay, got it. Two separate yeah, people. The... Two separate people. Okay, got it. Uh, so we can we can take turns switching off, um, describing okay. these people that we knew. Uh, before we died. And either of us can start. It doesn't really matter. Why don't you give me an example? I am going to start. I have the nine of pentacles, which is, according to the earth legend, someone beautiful and aloof. Um, so I'm going to say um, that in London town, there was um, a extremely um extremely uh well dressed and um flamboyant tailor 
by the name of Percy, um, who always wore um, extravagant, fine-colored, um, tailored suits um, with shiny shoes and um, floral uh, ecker chips. With, um, and he had long hair and um, and he was the tailor um, for a certain neighborhood in London town um, that was frequented by who were both a little more affluent but also um, a little bit um, on the fringes of like the artistic side of the community um, and um, Percy was was quite unapproachable unless you exhibited a certain kind of aesthetic refinement. So that's Percy, and I'm going to put him um, just anywhere on the pentagram. Um, let's put him here. So we have Percy, who is beautiful and aloof. Okay, got it, got it. Okay, got it. So, um, I will do the four of tentacles, which is, um, Sir Jackson. Um, minor nobility, uh, who spends most of his day wandering around the the market uh courtyard um basically just reinforming everyone of how important he is um i would say he spent a good chunk of time uh trying to get percy to to make him clothes to to um to to raise his status um uh, but I say, would say Percy didn't care for it so much. He would do his job. He would make him whatever, but he was not... Uh, uh, Jackson was not the kind of person he liked. Got it. He, he, he was a... He called him a pretender. Oh. Cool. So I will... Here... What's that? Nobility, right? Yep, nobility. Um, cool. And so he's going to be. What was it? He's um. E and. Powerful and greedy. Powerful. Cool. There you go. Great. Yeah. Um, I also have the Ace of Pentacles, which is someone mystical and intimidating. Um, so I am going to say um, that we are all acquainted with Fortune Teller by the name um, Wisteria, um, and <laughs> she, um, was a very old woman, um, who, um, was, was covered in many wrinkles, or, um, a lot of rings and amulets, um, which she used for um, spells and protection. And um, she generally told fortunes through um, the stirring of liquids. Like she would pour um, it did, uh, chemicals of different colors um, into bowls of water and she would tell fortunes based on the patterns that the um, 
that the different colored liquids would make in the bowls. Um, and generally she was um, considered to be a little bit of an eccentric by the nobility, so by people like Jackson, but those who were um, more on the artistic fringes in London town um, would often go to her for her early accurate predictions and omens. Um, so this is Wisteria. The liquid fortune teller. Who is mystical. Um, then I'm going to add Willie. The uh, the man who called himself everything. Ooh. He was poor, completely broke. But he called himself an artist. He called himself a magician. He called himself an inventor. He called himself a philosopher. He was everything. But Great. he was broke. Percy mm -hmm. said he wasn't good enough. Uh, Wisteria said he was fake. Uh, and Jackson wouldn't even look at him. Uh huh. He was Amazing. the unnoticed beggar. Great. Um, what did Willie look like? Uh, he would wear clothes that he had made himself. So he had pants and shirt and a shirt that were stitched together of all the things he could find out of handkerchiefs, bits of cloth, leather, and and uh, anything. A small patch on his shoulder was made from some chain mail he had found. Um, he had bits and baubles of, of gears and knobs and, and trinkets and string wired that were laced all across it. And he cool. smelled of uh, both dirty beggar junk smell, but also unattainable, unrecognizable fruits oh, wow. that were a couple days old. <laughs> wow, days old fruits, cool. Okay. Okay, so that's... Yeah, awesome. Cool. So now, um, for me, these memories are beginning to stir up the environment in the realm of the dead developing around me. So as, um, as Milo starts to perform his ritual, suddenly feel... Um, a strange chill in the air of the cavern of gears and all of the mist that has been surrounding me to become thicker. And I notice when I look up at the soaring waterfalls of magma that are dripping over the gears uh, is hardening and hardening until it becomes solid, blood-dark rock. That is my situation. Uh, as I complete the Ritual of Earth, my body feels somehow different. I feel slightly cold, only a little bit. I feel as if, even though I'm still standing in the same place I have been for several hours... I feel all of, a, all of a sudden as I have been transported, as I have shifted, moved, been pulled very far away and stand just a couple inches behind my eyes. Cool. All right. We now move to the ritual of water. Ritual of Trace the pentagram. <laughs> Would you like to do the honors of tracing the pentagram? Okay, I'm going to pick a new color. Uh, 
There we go. Great. Um, <laughs> now um, we're going to move this coin to the water. Um, to the water part of the underground, if I can pick it up. So, Are my drawings getting in the way? No, you're fine. And I will say a word from beyond. Um, rock. Okay. And um, now we will move <laughs> this coin. You ready for spooky humming? Here we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there it goes. Uh, and I will shuffle the cups. So the cards I got, they set aside and they stay kind of in my hand, right? So, about those. Uh, yeah, each card's only used once, and then that's it. Okay, got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, one card and look at it and describe a past scene from our friendship, the friendship between Milo and Sterling. But somewhere in this scene, we must also include one of these people surrounding us in the pentagram. So either Percy or Wisteria or Jackson or Willie, um, when you describe this scene, bring one of them into the scene. Okay. Um, so um, your card is going to be the three, which is your friend brought you to a party. And my card is going to be the queen, which is my friend gave me romantic advice. Okay, so my friend as in the dead friend. As in Sterling. Yeah. Okay, got it. So, so you are going to describe a situation where Sterling brought Milo to a party um, and this scene should involve one of these four people as well. At least? Can I do more than one? Yeah, it can definitely be more than one. Okay. At least one. Um... Yeah. Milo, I did not want to go. I don't like to go. Um, I'm very much more interested in stuff indoors at home. Um, but Sterling said that that's, that's not good for you. You have to see the sunlight eventually. Um, so we're going out to the like garden festival um, that is uh, orchestrated by many different lords. Um, Jackson's name is on the title, like, Gold Embossed, but he's pretty much not there. He's already uh, had so much alcohol that he's basically not present even before it started. Um, but Percy takes it as, like, the moment, his moment to shine, showing off his, his glorious creations. Um, we entered in... Uh, I would move slowly through the crowd uh, trying to find a, a corner where I can observe something and not, not have to be surrounded on all sides by people. Um, and would move myself over to a bench and sit down while Sterling is nearby um, doing whatever whatever he enjoys doing with a bunch of people. Um... And uh, I would wait there, looking across, seeing uh, Willie be escorted away um, by security, um, and seeing the, the grand, like, uh, Percy has made this dress, and it's pinned up against a, a wall that he has had erected just for this. Um, but the wall is like, the, the, the dress, I mean, is, is like 15 feet tall. It's this huge thing. It's not wearable by a human being. It's this huge thing, but it in itself is this 
collection of beautiful different pieces, ribbons of silk. Um, it, it seems to be made up of multiple different pieces that weave in and out of each other, but is definitely a cohesive and beautiful whole. Cool. Okay. I am going to talk about a time when um, when Milo gave me romantic advice. So um, I'm going to say that um, we're still actually at this party. Um, and um, sort of um, by the the crystal glasses of absinthe um, that everyone is um, sipping from. And um, I say to, to Milo, you know, I'm, I'm really, I need your help. I am, I must confess to you, I am absolutely enthralled by Percy. Um, I think he is so very dashing, um, but... I don't think I'm important enough for him to notice me um, as I am a um, simple, um, I am a simple apothecary and um, I am merely uh, visited by such men as he um, when they are desperately ill and in need of some, some tincture. Um, and so I don't know how I can possibly get his attention. Um, oh, um, said to me, um, surely the, the only way that you could ever find out, um, whether or not you have a chance at, at a romantic rendezvous with Percy is to visit Wisteria, the fortune teller, her, um, prophecies reveal. Um, and so... Um, I, I thought about this, um, but I, I did not act upon it right away. And we'll leave it at that. Okay. So next, so next um, we're each going to draw one more card and we're going to do the same thing again, um, making sure that um, people that we have not really talked much about get to shine somehow in this scene. Okay. Um, so your card is two, which is you are, and my card is the page, which is that I learned something new about you. So, uh, do you want to... why, don't, why don't you go first on this one? Okay, great. Um, so, I decided to go see Wisteria, the fortune teller, the next day. Um, and um, I rode uh, in a, in a horse-drawn carriage down the cobblestone streets to um, the... Uh, slightly creaky two-story wooden house where Wisteria lived um, alone. Uh, she was a widow. Um, and um, I took off my shoes and socks um, and um, took some dirt from uh, outside uh, the house uh, in her spread over the doorpost and um, let no evil come into this dwelling for here sits she who sees beyond um, which was the customary thing to say when entering Wisteria's house um, and then I went in and Wisteria um, was sitting on a rocking chair um, trimming the edges off of some daisies to put into some kind of a concoction um, and Breathlessly, I said to her, Wisteria, you must help me. I have fallen hopelessly in love with Percy, the inaccessible and greatly beautiful tailor. How can I possibly get his attention? Um, and Wisteria said to me with 
a look in her eye of, of nothing but pity. Someone must die. And I thought about this. Um, and I said, Wisteria, um, that's terrible. Um, are, are you absolutely sure about this? And, and she said, do not tell Milo, for this will bring him great sadness. And that was our meeting. Okay. Um, Sterling, against his better judgment, he knew better, did exactly the opposite of what she said. Um, uh, it, it took him about two days before he broke down and explained everything. Uh, and sitting, uh, up in Milo's attic bedroom, uh, they both talked about it. Uh, Sterling saying that, that he was distraught both at the cost that would come and that he was also in a half mind to pay the price anyway. Uh, Milo said, Who must die and why? M Sterling didn't know either, either of those, the answer to either of those questions. Um, but Milo did. Um, and Milo revealed that it was him. The person that would have to die would be me. Because else I would be in your way. Oh. Dun dun dun. Um, and I th think I'm gonna just say that that's it. Great. Perfect. It wasn't exactly an argument, but I think it qualifies. I think it qualifies as an argument. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, we're gonna do the same thing again. Um, we have two more memories. Um, there are no requirements at all for what you talk about, um, like who you talk about and who's brought into these two memories. Um, so you have the Knight of Cups, which is you were jealous of me. And I have the Nine of Cups against someone. So decide who goes. Uh, I would rather you go first. I gotta think about this one. <laughs> so I'm gonna defend you against someone. Um, so um, I was very disturbed by, by Milo's statement that he would have to die in order for Percy to notice me and B, that he was standing in my way what did this mean? Did this mean that Milo and Percy were lovers? Did this mean that Milo um, was somehow a defender of, of Percy's honor and didn't want him to be falling in with low lives who merely work in apothecary shops? Um, did this mean that um, Milo had had some kind of premonition or that he had secret occult knowledge that I did not? I, I just wasn't really sure. And I was so aghast when he said this and so appalled by the direction that our conversation was going that I I was sort of frozen and didn't ask those questions or think about them until later. Um, and the next day, as I was working in my apothecary shop, um, I, um, I decided to see if I could find out 
more information about whether there was something going on between Milo and Percy without asking Milo directly. Um, so I sort of went in the gossip direction and um, sort of started questioning everybody who came in for tinctures. Like, have you seen Milo and Percy together? And do you know anything about Percy's love life or Milo's love life? Uh, does he have a secret life that I don't know about? Um, and um, at one point, Willie came into the store. Um, he had sort of uh, a tendency to like, just sort of lumber into my apothecary shop looking for like free samples of like hallucinogens or cough medicine or like all kinds of stuff. Sort of ran all about how, you know, in spirit, but poor in substance and had to be given the remedy and all of these things. Um, and so Willie came ranting into my store smelling like days old bananas. Um, <laughs> and I asked him just like I've been asking everybody else, you know, do you know anything about Percy's love life? Do you know anything about Milo's secret love life? Is there anything going on between them? Do you know anything about this? Um, and Willie um, told me that um, certainly Milo and Percy were not. Um, in fact, what happened um, was that um, Milo um, was secretly the um, the lover of the noble Lord Jackson, um, who hated Percy, um, and that Jackson had hatched a plot to Percy, um, fall into a terrible reputation, um, and that, um, I sort of pieced it together that the reason that that Milo was was so insistent upon um, keeping me away from Percy and um, sort of plotting to to bring Percy into great uh, disrepute, um, and that it would sort of drag us all down with him if um, I were to associate with Percy and if Milo were to be my best friend. So it was really this whole convoluted, like, political um, romance taboo. Um, and Milo was, was sworn to defend um, Jackson's reputation and honor and so could not allow me to get involved with Percy. Um, and... So this is what Willie said. Um, but Willie was, you know, definitely a drunk for no means ever told the truth. Um, I didn't trust him. And I said to Willie, this is impossible. There's no way this could possibly be the case. I don't even think ja Lord Jackson is interested in men. I, he has a wife. Um, never associate with somebody so pompous. Um, I, I really, I, this can't possibly be true. And you're, you're besmirching the name of my best friend. Get out of my apothecary shop. You can't have any hallucinogens or cough medicine. And that was that. Okay. I was jealous of my friend because my friend can he can do he can he can make he can make things i have been um i cursed with inability with misfortune everything i touch crumbles in some way or another the only way I've ever been able to get anywhere is is by following along or catching on to someone else. Um, my my small uh, the the longest I've ever worked at a place was when um, Jackson let me work in a stable for a few years, 
but then he kicked me out. Uh, I worked for Percy for a couple uh, weeks, and then he kicked me out. Um, but Sterling has always been able to do what he needed. Uh, he was able to sustain himself. He finished his apprenticeship at like 12 years old. He was uh, sufficient for himself. Um, but I never was. Uh, and so I have seen, I'm currently following the coattails of Jackson again. Um, and, uh, yeah, he is planning. He, he does hate Percy because Percy never is the only person who says that Jackson isn't good enough, that he isn't uh, a cultured noble. Um, and I don't care about my reputation because my reputation is only slightly better than Willie's. Um, but Sterling's reputation is very important. And if he gets dragged into this, uh, they will both uh, they will both go down. Although Willie was wrong, it wasn't. It was something more nefarious than just taboo. It was something much more uh, nefarious and eldritch. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. Cool. Okay. Now we draw our last two water cards. Um, this time, our um, memory must relate in some way to conflict and foreshadow it in some way. So when we tell this next part, a foreshadowing that eventually you will want to bring me back from the dead in order to gain some kind of power. Um, foreshadowing that eventually I will want to possess your soul. So there should be some foreshadowing of these desires or tendencies or hints of this, um, though not necessarily directly, somewhere in this part. Okay. That makes sense? Like a kind of like a, a hint or a whiff that this will eventually go in the direction of uh, 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 possess your soul. If it's all right, I'd like to go first on that one. Do we, we draw a new card? Yeah, we draw a new card. Okay. And um, you get uh, the king manipulated you into doing something and I get the seven which is that I lied to Milo um the day of Sterling's funeral Milo stands with his head low staring at the muddy grave where they lay Sterling down and says this was his fault I warned him and I tried to protect him but he went on anyway he tricked me into into helping him. And now him and Percy are both dead. Now mm -hmm. I'm alone. And no one else can help me along. I am alone and I am powerless. I am sitting alone in, in the ocean and I will soon drown. I need... Wow. I need something. There. Cool. Awesome. Um, I'm going to flash back 
to um, point at which I had just sort of heard this rant from Willie um, and kicked him out of my apothecary shop. And um, I was so agitated by what he said to me, um, Axton having this whole affair. Um, and um, went uh, to his castle um, was um, slightly outside of London town. Um, it was a half a day travel by horseback and um, his castle was in um, not very good repair and it was not a very large castle. Um, he was like a minor noble. Um, he like wasn't even a duke or an earl. He was just like, he had some like in very minor title. Um, and um, he um, nevertheless had a, a castle that was flanked by bots and he was sort of leaning against a turret when I arrived um, and he sort of scowled um, but came down because he was curious um, and he said to me oh Sterling the apothecary what can I do for you um and i sort of grimaced and and said to jackson you know i i'm so sorry to bother you my lord um but i i must know it is it is absolutely vital to me and i sort of thought about like i was about to say like tell me if you are having you know a love affair with my friend but i sort of caught myself in the middle and i was like what the hell am i doing this is going to, you know, if this is not true, this could be almost a treasonable thing to accuse him of um, committing adultery um, when he is a noble and I'm merely a common apothecary. Um, and I sort of caught myself midway um, and I said, um, would you be so kind as to accompany me to my apothecary shop where I have made for you a very special... Um, a very special opioid that can be used to um, alleviate all manners of um, ill will and distress. Um, and so he was very intrigued by this. Um, and we sort of got into his nicer, fancier carriage. Um, and um, I left my horse there. I wasn't sure how I was going to get it back, but I figured I'd deal with that later. Um, we sort of rode in this beautiful, carriage back into town um he came with me into my apothecary shop and i just sort of had to like make some shit up um to like make something for him to have an excuse to have brought him there um but in the meantime um i had him there at an ideal moment because every day after work uh, milo would always come by the apothecary shop to come get me and we would go for like a pint of ale um, and so he came by at his usual time and I was standing there with Jackson and I sort of pretended like Jackson and I had been like having a private rendezvous and flirting um, and sort of wanted to see if Milo would act jealous or disturbed by this to see if I could confirm the rumor that I had heard from Willie. Um, and Milo when he saw what appeared to me, me flirting with Jackson, um, and Jackson obviously having come a very long distance in order to be there, um, looked extremely distraught. His face went pale. He started to sweat. He was crying a little bit. And he eventually said he had to excuse himself and sort of ran out of my store. And so at that moment, I realized it must be true. Milo and Jackson were lovers and were plotting against me. 
we'll leave that there. Okay. So next, I am the dead, and these memories provoke a jolt of emotion so strong that I momentarily forget I am dead. This is an emotion of the combination of betrayal and desire. Betrayal by my friend who would keep me from the beauty of Percy the tailor. Overwhelmed and need to be swept up in his gorgeous array of shimmering fabrics. And you, the living, as you complete the ritual of water, the weather begins to change. Please tell me how the weather is changing. Uh, the sun has just began to peak up, but I do not see it. The The sky has gone extremely dark from clouds and fog. Um, and we have a very uh, strange situation of watching the heavy rain come down and push the fog around. Um, ending up with, with a, a mist similar to dry ice moving itself along in strange swirls and vortexes on the cobblestone outside. Cool. Okay. Turning the page to the magical link, we have... We are approaching the rituals of fire and air, but first, the living must say... Why is this object, this um, foreign coin that I gave you, why is it so important to you? It's the first pay I ever earned. Cool. Um, the secret about that object um, that you don't know um, is that... Um, Inside the coin, um, if you were to pry apart the coin, um, there is a small jewel um, that I hid inside the coin um, so that one day um, I could tell you that you, in fact, had more resources than you initially supposed. Um, but I knew that if I gave you something like that directly and immediately, that you would be ashamed and feel that our friendship was even more unequal. So I hid it in the coin. Okay. Ritual of fire. This is how we find out how I died. Um, so we're going to invoke fire. First, go ahead and trace that pentagram. Uh, freehand, we're gonna say, I want that color. Okay. And... Good. <laughs> It's like a little bit of a ketchup and mustard situation. <laughs> and now, um, moving the um, the coin to fire. I will say a word from beyond betrayal. And now we will move this coin around to the south and hum spookily. There it goes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm shuffling the wands. For all of you at home, I'd just like you to know my cat is now sitting on all of the discarded tarot cards. <laughs> I'm gonna show you, wait. 
Well, I mean, you know, black cat. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, for the Ritual of Fire, um, I am going to draw two cards. Um, we do our parts separately. So I'm drawing two. Um, I have drawn the Three of Wands, which is a journey, and the Six of Wands, which is a celebrity or popular person. I know who that is. I know who that is, too. <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to describe how I died. Um, so, um, so what happened next um, is that I um, I I was just appalled out the truth um, about um, affair with Jackson and the fact that they were trying to keep me from Percy so that everyone would avoid falling into great disrepute. Um, uh, and I just felt like to hell with my reputation. Um, obviously, it's already going to be in shambles um, as a result of this embarrassing interaction that's happened in my apothecary shop. Um, in front of Jackson, who is a lord. Um, so I sort of left Jackson there um, and ran out of the shop um, toward Percy's um, tailor shop. Meanwhile, Jackson uh, was extremely annoyed by all of these goings on and chased after me going, what ho, and all sorts of things like that. Um, and so I was running toward the, uh, the, uh, tailor shop. Jackson's chasing me. We get there. Um, I fling open the door. I, um, and Percy is standing there in this like perfect statuesque position, um, admiring another one of his, um, gorgeous emerald green oversized dresses that are only for display. Um, and he turns and... And he looks at me a little bit confused and, and says, oh, oh, yes, yes, of course, the apothecary. What can I do for you? Um, and I, I'm i sort of sweating and trembling and I, I run to him and I, I grab him by his wonderful ruffled cuff um, and I grab Jackson by his arm and I say, um, we must not go on living this charade all must be um, known to all of us and and you must tell everyone what's going on and they both look at me like i'm completely insane um and um and i i start to say um you have to understand milo and jackson and then as soon as i say that jackson realizes oh my god this crazy apothecary knows about my affair he's going to ruin my reputation so Jackson interrupts me and he says, oh no, no, old boy, I'm sure we can straighten all of this out. Please, please be my guest, come to my castle. We'll, we'll have some wine, we'll play some parlor games. Everything will be straightened out. I'm sure you're very mistaken. Percy, please come join us and we'll have a lovely time. Um, he's trying to smooth things over. Um, and he sort of ushers both me and Percy back into his carriage. At this point, I'm really frustrated, I'm flustered, I'm really attracted to Percy, I'm really mad at Jackson. Um, Milo's not even with us anymore. Um, we're sort of riding toward the castle, and really the only good thing I can think of about this situation is that at least I'm going to get my horse back. <laughs> uh, so we're riding toward the castle, um, and we, we arrive there. And, um, you know, Jackson sort of um, brings us in um, and he offers up us um, some lovely wine. Um, it smells a little strange to me, but I'm, I'm not really 
thinking about it right now. I see all strange all the time, Carrie, and conversation where, where Jackson says to me, um, yes, of course it's true. Milo and I are lovers. Um, this uh, tailor shop, you could have me ruined. Um, Percy is extremely intrigued by all of this, um, about the nobility. Um, and, you know, Jackson sort of confesses and spills the, the, um, spills the whole story to us, which I, I'm starting to wonder why he would ever be so forthcoming, um, until I notice, um, that I can't move my limbs. Um, and I look over at Percy and he seems to be in a similar situation. He's sort of struck, um, into a, a sort of solid state where usually his body motions are, are extraordinarily fluid. Um, and gradually um, a fog comes over me um, and my, my last moment of consciousness um, is looking over it at Percy um, and seeing that for the first time he is actually looking straight at me <laughs> and I, I die of poisoned wine okay so the secret never gets out at least so far all right so I do the same thing describing the events of the day my friend died did I witness the death or hear about it second hand how did I feel and what did I do so your cards are the Queen of Wands, which is a well-meaning error, and the Ten, which is a sickness. So you have a sickness and a well-meaning error somewhere in the story of how you found out that I died and what you did. I did, was not aware of it on the day that it happened. But um I Oh, okay. <laughs> I began to walk home and Willie rushes up to me and just babbling nonsense trying to warn me saying that something terrible has happened. Um but he's getting himself mixed up. He's he doesn't seem to be in the same place with half his conversations. One party saying, you know, warning something terrible is happening. Um, your friend is in trouble, and then the other is him saying, and I've got a cure. I can fix everything. Here, take this, and hands me a small um, bit of paper, folded up. Um, I inspect it and. Uh, I don't trust it too much, but I, I, I go home with it. Um, and at home, I open it up and just look down, smell it. And the moment I smell it, everything goes black. I see stars and I fall back. Blink one more time and I'm looking up at the ceiling. And then I wake up the next day and walk over to my window looking out, realizing it's the next morning. Um, uh, no. It's the evening. The sun is not rising, it's going down. I've missed a whole day, I've got to go. So I rush out, um, and the moment I get to the door, I've just all of a sudden stop as I feel my stomach just rise and drop. And I vomit on the floor nearby realizing I am desperately sick I can't go to work even though I've missed it I can't go and, and talk to my boss and try and uh, negotiate into keeping my job I I need medicine I, I'll go to the apothecary uh, I slowly drag myself to the apothecary open the door that is still 
slightly ajar and find Sterling lying on the ground, foam on his lips, a blue tint on his skin, and ingredients, apothecary ingredients spilled everywhere. And that's it. Yeah. Oh, that sneaky Jackson. All right. In response to these memories, I am starting to catch a glimpse back into the world of the living. I see the image of Milo weeping over my foaming corpse. And I see him uh, rummaging around on the desk of um, the apothecary uh, shop to find a forged suicide note um, about my desperate love for Percy driving me to, um, to take my own life. Um, and I want to scream, no, no, it's fake. Jackson murdered me. Um, but I know that I cannot be heard. And you... As I complete the ritual fire, hints of the dead realm are gathering within the circle. I see that the the star has, or the pentagram has begun to slightly sh- change. The circle has edges of gears. I see the the candles appear to be made of some melted magma, slowly forming into stone. I smell sulfur and smoke and the room is starting to get a bit clouded as if someone has burning incense for a long time or something cool okay time for summoning the dead The living. You are about to conjure your dead friend into the circle. Set the scene for this act of magic by answering the following questions. How much time has passed since I died? What is happening in your life now? What led up to performing this ritual? How did you acquire the power to summon the dead? It has been four days since he died. Three days since I knew about it. Um... I have lost my job. My ally, Jackson, has abandoned me. And I will be losing my home soon. I begged Wisteria to help me. And she provided me with a piece of old parchment said that if I followed these instructions I could follow down a dangerous path that might save me or destroy me I said that I'm destroyed either way okay time for you to intone the threefold conjuration where you will um, you will say these magic words to make me appear in the pentagram. I flipped the coin over. Um, we were supposed to flip it over before and now we're flipping it back oh, the other way. Whoops. And I, think, I think we just forgot a step and it's fine. <laughs> there we go. Okay. It's back. It's back. The other way now. Yep. Uh, yep. Beloved Sterling, thou who perished by poison, uh, through this coin I conjure thee. Beloved Sterling, thou who perished by poison, come uh, through this 
coin I conjure thee. Beloved Sterling, thou who buy poison, through this coin I conjure thee. When I appear in the magic circle, it is first as a figure entirely cloaked in mist. Filled with magma, which quickly opens into rock. And behind me, you see the churning of terrible, terrible gears. Tell me why you have conjured me. I am alone, and I need to be able to take care of myself for once. You have conjured me too late. The realm of the dead has distorted and transformed me. It will be mine. So now we are going to battle. Oh my God, my cat is like on my keyboard. So <laughs> uh, we go to the ritual of air where um, we will invoke air. So go ahead and trace that pentagram one more time. Yay! That one. That one. <laughs> there. Yes, perfect. <laughs> it's now ketchup, mustard, relish, and grape jelly. <laughs> On a pentagram. A, a, a English delicacy. We don't need salt. We've got plenty of other condiments. Exactly. We've got all the other condiments to care about this um, So now I'm going to move this to the air point of the pentagram and say um, a word from beyond. Hopelessness. And now bringing this back around. Mm. <sighs> okay, now, here we go to the swords. Here's how this works. So, we each draw four cards but we only use three. Okay. Um, so you have four to choose from and three that you will actually use. Um, each of these cards represents a weapon that we may use in this battle to determine whether you will um, successfully get me to give you some kind of power or... I your soul for all of eternity. Um, and the each of these cards um, has both a literal meaning and a metaphorical meaning. So for example, um, the two is a blindfold or darkness. So you can decide when you play it if you want to use the literal weapon or the metaphorical weapon. Um, you have a choice. Okay. Um, and the way it works is first, I'm gonna flip this real coin. It has landed tails, meaning I will go first. Um, and I will play one of these weapons and describe how I use it against you. You will then counter it by playing another one and describing how you use it against me. We'll go back and forth like that until we've each played three and then we come to a consensus based on what's happened as to who won the battle. Okay. Okay. So you have the following weapons at your disposal. You have the 10, which is... Community, community. allies or solidarity. You have the king, which is... An important, an important document, document or instilling doubts. Okay. You have the knight. Which is an animal or passion. 
You have the eight. Magic words and hexes or Which, imprisonment. Those are the weapons at your disposal. I have at my disposal the following four. I have the queen, which is control of the weather or logical persuasion. I have the three, which is a vial of blood or loyalty. I have the page, which is um, a shield or what my friend does not know. And I have the four, which is a rune covered box or prayer. So you might want to take a minute to look at your cards and think about how you want to do this. Um, let me know in a minute when you feel sort of ready and I will make my first play. Uh, I'm ready. I I've played okay. this game before. Okay. This Great. part of the game, I've done this before. Yeah, we've done this before. We just didn't have okay. cards. We just went, I have a spaceship. Exactly. <sighs> exactly. All right. Here we go. So I am going to start um, by um, one second. Um, okay, I'm going to start um, with control of the weather. Um, and I am going to um, cause a terrible rainstorm inside your house um, so that all of your candles are drenched and it's now completely dark. Mm. I... I will use I will use 10 and as which is going to be community allies as the room gets dark the door bursts open and Jackson stands behind me I am going to a vial of blood and I am going to say do you see this vial this is your blood which you did allow me to drain from you when you had a fever I have been keeping it all these years and now I shall use it to bind your soul eternally. I will say that you cannot do that to me. I have been preparing for this for at least a couple days. Um, and I will use the king, an important document that... Wisteria has given to me. And hold it up. This. She said that this would protect me. She said it uh, would. I open up a rune covered box. It is covered in runes that look like gears. Horrible copper and bronze gears that smell like blood and turn endlessly of their own accord. I open this box and a terrible magnetic wind starts to whoosh, pulling you toward it. And I say, I shall keep your soul in this box for all time. I will try, I will attempt, to put you in the box with magic words and hexes that I read from the piece of paper. So now we have to decide how powerful that, that, that spell you have is. 
because that's really the crux of, of whether or not you manage to to turn the tables on me and and trap me in that box. So I'd like to hear from you a little bit more about what Wisteria told you about that um, that paper and that spell. She said that it was dangerous, that nothing was truly certain with it, but I said that the only thing I know is if I don't do anything, I am doomed. Um, yeah. She said it's powerful, but risky. Yeah. Do you do you think based on based on everything you know about Wisteria's powers and versus like me having your blood and having this like gearbox from hell, do you think that the, her spell is more powerful than my gearbox from hell and the and the blood? Well, I would say no, but I, what I what I am imagining is that I am redirecting it. Got so it. I redirect you into the box instead of me. Oh, Someone has to go into it. So you're like you're like using the spell to sort of put like push me into the like magnet of wind yeah. and sort of me into the box instead. Yeah. Someone has to go in. Okay. I think that sounds reasonable and I think that can work. So um I would like you to describe um, the moment of your victory and getting me into this box and sending me back to hell. Okay. I shout, screaming as the storm inside wails. I shout the words that I do not understand, distorted versions of a language I've never known. And the box that you hold out turns back towards you. And you are pulled into the box that I reach out and catch as it falls in gently into my hand. And I am going to say as an epilogue that at the moment that I am bound into this box, the gears stop turning and sink into the box so that it looks like an ordinary wooden box. When you open the box, there's nothing inside. But the coin that you were using in the center of the pentagram suddenly cracks open and you find a tiny, perfect, beautiful, blood red ruby. And that I... you are then able to use to salvage your terrible economic disaster. All right. And that. Uh, yeah, I say I don't. You... I don't need this anymore, and I will put the, I will put the ruby in the box, and I wow. go down and start my first day, running. Sterling's Apothecary. Wow. So so noble, Milo. Milo has a noble heart. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Kinda kinda no. <laughs> so that's that's right there. That's it. There it is. That's the story. Awesome. Thank you very much. You the fortune tellers and try to find out how to get your crush to pay attention to you. Yeah. Uh, that, was, that was a lot of fun. Um, for, for those of you who tuned, tuned in late, this is dead friend, a game of necromancy. Uh, my name is Lucian Khan. I wrote this game. You can download it as a pay what you want print and play. It is on drive through RPG which is just drive through rpg.com spelled through like T-H-R-U. Um, and you can just search for dead friend. Um, if you would like to follow me on the Twitters, my screen name is Otheogony, which is O H underscore T H E O G O N Y. In fact, I will type it this pentagram. Yeah. Like so. Yeah. We can totally do that. 
Oh, the agony. It's a pun because it's like, oh, the agony. But the agony is a like history of the birth of the gods. So it's a nerdy little pun for you about uh, Pantheon of Gods. Um, that's my Twitter handle, and you can follow me on Twitter and um, find out all about all the other weird games that I am making. Much awesome. like this one. Thank you very much. That was awesome. Um, that was awesome. Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah. Uh, I am Shogun uh, on Twitter. I am uh, Shogun uh, S H O W G U N 117. Um, I. Uh, run games here on uh, Welcome to the Party. I will be doing Dark Heresy tomorrow at uh, 5 o'clock, 5.30. 5.30. Um, yeah. Uh, everyone, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to be moving on. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.